God for that. The one hundred songs that make a they joyful su- noise. They have suggested the that when we uh, serve the Lord, it look like we're so far away. Zoom in on uh, Pastor when you're talking that to is his right. presence is the same. Know, know ye that the Lord, He is God, and it is He that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates. That is with thanksgiving and with praise. Amen. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy that is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. To all generations. Father, we thank you this morning for how you have blessed us. Not only you woke us up this morning, you covered us with your anointing, your blessing, your guidance. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless us now. Be with us in a special kind of a way throughout our services. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. If we have any graduates, will you please come forth at this time? This is Memorial's Day. Amen. Give, give all of the veterans a home. Amen. That has served because a lot of them that are, that have served in services are Christian. And yet, even the person that's going to speak to you today is a Vietnam War area. Let's bro, let's honk our horns right now for that. Just for that, and we thank God for you. Amen. Amen. We're gonna ask uh, Brother Olson to come and pray. Amen. Our Memorial Day prayer at this time. Amen. He's an ex-Marine. We thank God for him, and uh, he's a great. Great man. Talk for him at this time. Amen. Let's be brief. Right now, Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for another opportunity, another chance to praise your holy name. We thank you for all of our veterans. Thank you for the calling that's put on our lives to serve this wonderful country. We thank you for being, we thank you for knowing that you are the true leader of this country. It doesn't matter who's in the White House, who's in the Senate, who's yeah. in Congress, who's the mayor, who's the governor, it doesn't matter because we serve you, the once risen Savior, the one true leader. And as long as we follow you and we are the good soldiers of your army, chosen ones, because we're chosen by you, we're chosen by your blood. We thank you, we praise you. We just ask that you just touch, not only touch the veterans, just touch everyone with the sound of my voice. Give, give them whatever their hearts desire. Lord, you're so worthy. You're so worthy. We thank you for how you've seen us through. We thank you for how you bring us through. Thank you for your man service today. We thank you because we know that we give you all the praise, give you all the honor, give you all the glory. Because you're so, you're so worthy. You're so worthy. And while the world may not know what this holiday stands for, we know. And we praise you for it. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sister Linda Johnson is our order of the day that is for praise and worship. She's going to come to us at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad. And I need, and I am going to invite those of you who are sitting in your cars this morning just on this praise and worship song. If you would just get out of your car um, today and just stand by your car and let's sing this song. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. How many soldiers that I have in the house that are obedient and that will do what has been asked. Amen, amen. Here we go. Bless that wonderful name. Here we go.
the name of Jesus. And by his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Is he Lord of your life this morning? Amen. Sister, don't get in the car, sister. Oh, come on up here and pray for us. You know, God has been good to us and we have much to pray about. We have much to pray about. And we thank God that we can go to the throne of grace and that God can inform us. He can hear us. We can communicate with him and we can tell him all of our troubles. Yeah, even while we're all alone, shut up in our secret closet. Amen. But I'm glad today that we can come and we can go to the house of God. Amen. And we're just asking that everybody who have a prayer request, honk right now, honk right now, honk right now. Amen. Somebody, somebody, honk for me and everybody up here. Everybody got a need. Everybody got a need. And we just thank God for you this morning. Amen. Amen. Sister Lemma is going to come with our prayer song. Amen. And after that, we're going to ask Sister Johnson to lead us to the throne of grace. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic 
for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. Amen. And the reason why we say this is because with our children and with us, this is the only country we know because we're African and then American. Am I right? And so we thank God for that. We really, really do. Amen and amen. Amen. It's just wonderful to be able to share on this day with our graduates because it's a beautiful thing to be able to walk across that is the state. And that word commencement, exercise, it means that you should do what? That you should move on. That is from that place. You understand? Sometimes you wish some people would have a commit, I mean, a commencement exercise from sin. And oh. they would move on. Somebody ought to hope you. Come on, preacher. Preach on, preacher. Preach on. Sometimes you wish some people would have a commencement exercise. That is from a lot of things that happening in our life. We just need to move on, don't we? But today we have our students, amen, and we thank God that is for them. Now, first of all, we're going to have uh, our speaker to come at this time. Our speaker is Dr. Michael Coleman, and uh, he's a brother that loved the Lord, and not only loved the Lord, but he loves the Word. He has, uh, not only he's a Vietnam vet, but he's married with children. I don't know how many he got left. He has three kids. Amen. And I'm quite sure by now that all of them are grown. Amen. But he started from his academic uh, regalia, started from first grade of kindergarten, and now he has a doctor's degree. Somebody need to hope your horn. He, he got a real doctor's degree. Now, everybody don't have that. Am I right? And we thank God for him this morning. As I said, he loved the Lord. He's been pastoring for over 20 years. Amen. And he's still doing it right now at this particular time. And I can tell you by being a senior, Pastoring a church when you're a senior is not an easy thing. Amen. Because sometimes on morning like this, we we desire to sleep in too. But we have to say we got to go and do what the Lord told us to do. We thank God. Thank God for Pastor Michael. Amen. We're going to have a song at this particular time. And the next voice you will hear would be Dr. Michael Coleman. We thank God for him. He's from the Greenfield Church of God. Amen. you all and may the Lord continue to encourage all of our hearts by Christ Jesus. My name is Brother Michael Williams and I'm here from the Greenfield Avenue Church of God bringing you greetings where our pastor is Dr. Michael Coleman Sinner. Amen. Amen. Pray for me as I attempt to sing this song. God bless you. I could not remove all sin and stain. Every blot, no more have I to paint or fear. 
I know the Lord is with me. He's always here. Jesus, my Lord. My Savior and King. My everything. Jesus, my Lord. My Savior and the King. My everything. Whoa. I sing. Once I was lost, far, far from home. I thought I was forsaken, but I was never alone. And then one day, he called me by my name, changed my life, and now I'll never be the same. You placed your word, yes, you did down. Now I know in you I have a brand new start, yes. No more have I to faint or fear. I know that the Lord is with me because he's always here. Jesus, my Lord. My Savior and King, my everything, whoa, victory. That he gave his life, <clears throat> and yes, he paid. Oh, remove all stain. You love me as I proved him. Do if he puts me into victory. Whoa, yeah. Jesus, my Lord, Savior, and King. My everything. Jesus, my Lord, ooh-wee. You're my Savior and King, my everything. Whoa. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. A little short here. Praise God. We thank God for this opportunity to speak to some graduates. I've had a few graduations myself. I would like to have a word of prayer before I begin. Shall we pray? Father, we come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. We know, the Lord, that because of you and because of what you have done for us, we have been blessed. Now we just want to say thank you. And we thank pray you. the Lord that you would help us to say a word of encouragement to those, the Lord, who are on this life journey as well. In the precious name of your son, Jesus, we ask this. Amen. Amen. I would like to say thank you to your pastor. He called me, uh, actually, I think it was on Tuesday, and I was preparing to do a eulogy for a good friend. And uh, he told me what he needed. And he said, well, I think uh, my wife said I'd probably call too late. <laughs> and so uh, I really love, I really love 
Brother Lon, I'm gonna tell you that now. And so he told me what he needed done, and I said, well, I'll, I'll do it for you. So if there's any failure, it's not on his part. It'll be on my part. I remember when I was first called into the ministry. It was some time ago. And uh, the Lord had called me and, and I had started out my life with a deficit. And uh, when I was from the fourth grade to the sixth grade, I was losing my hearing and we didn't find out until I was in the sixth grade that I was losing my hearing. And so I had trouble reading and writing and I'm still challenged with it. It doesn't just go away, even though I've studied and so forth, I st I'm still challenged with it. But I got saved when I was about 15 and a half, and the Lord called me to preach. I said, man, with all of these problems that I have, I can't read, I can't write, and you want me to preach. And so, one of the things that I learned, one of the first scriptures that I learned was 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So this particular scripture stuck with me. And uh, so I began to study, but I want to read this uh, verse to you in the Amplified Bible. It says, study and be eager and do your, your utmost to present yourself to God yeah. approved, tested by trial, Amen. a workman who has no cause to be ashamed uh, to correctly analyze and accurately dividing rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Amen. And so I began on a life's journey going to school. And one of the, the things that I did was I had to finish school. Yeah. Now, I told you about all of my challenges. I couldn't read, I couldn't write. And God wanted me to preach. But I didn't graduate in the top of the class. I didn't graduate sigma cum laude. Or magnum cum laude, whatever. I didn't, die, I didn't graduate with any cums. <laughs> I, I graduated from high school with a C plus average. So I was still, I was still struggling and still wanting to go to school. So one of the things I did, you know, some folks go to uh, uh, graduate from school and they are, they'll, they'll tell them, say, you are not college material. And uh, uh, basically, I was told I was not college material the way I was treated. So, but I still wanted to go to school. Amen. Yes, sir. And so, one of the things I did is I went to a community college, and I began to work on the things that I was weak in. Mm. And one of my areas was was reading and writing. And I began to work on those areas. And. I, I took reading classes. I'm in college taking reading classes. Mm -hmm. But I kept going. 
Guess what God did? God blessed me. And I graduated from community college. And you know what the Lord did? I graduated with honors. God blessed me. And, and not only that, but I was working full time and going to school. God blessed me. And I graduated with honors from that community college. And then I said, well, I got to keep going. I was uh, studying in a, a, a curriculum uh, uh, area of what they call, um, I graduated with, uh, from a class of lifelong learning. And I don't know, some of you maybe have, uh, are not in that class and you have, a, you have stopped learning. But I'm in the class of lifelong learning. And, and so I ended up going to Wayne State. I graduated from Wayne State. Bachelor's in General Studies. Amen. College of Lifelong Learning. And as I studied, I realized I had one brother, wonderful, a wonderful white brother. That brother prayed me all the way through school. God will do it. And so I kept going. Then I said, you know, I'm still not feeling sufficient. And I still, I'm going to tell you something. You see these stripes on my arm? I still don't feel all right. sufficient all right. All right. some people uh, all this does is open the door to continue to learn that's all it means and so i graduated from wayne state and i said i got to get some more so i went to seminary now in order to graduate from seminary you have to maintain a minimum of a b average now remember, this brother here is not, I have never considered myself brilliant, uh, outstanding, That's and all right. of that kind That's of stuff. Right. I'm one of them fellas that I've been digging all of my life. I've been shoveling dirt, and it's been tough all the way. Amen. Mm. So I went to Ashland Theological Seminary, and, and this is crazy. I was going to school full time and working full time oh, yeah. mm. and I don't know how in the world I got through. Mm. I look back and say, I, one of my cousins there, well he's deceased now, he looked at my resume and he said, wait a minute, you aren't that much older than me. How in the world did you do all of that? I'm going to tell you how I did it all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There was a fire in my soul. Amen. Come on. God put it there. Preach, Man, preacher. There was a thirst. Because God said that we should study. Find yourself approved. Yes, sir. We should study to show ourselves approved. Yes. Now, I wasn't trying to measure up to man's expectation. I'm trying to measure up to God's expectation. All right. Yes, sir. So, I uh, kept going. I graduated from Ashton Theological Seminary. Maintained that B average. Then there was some still something down inside that wanted to keep on going. And, and, and I'm praying that you graduates will understand that it doesn't stop. It's, it, it's a commencement. It means it keeps going. Amen. Oh, wow. Well. It's, it's not an end. It's a beginning. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it, it, you continue to have beginnings. Mm. So... I said, I got to get some more. There's a thirst on the inside. Don't ever lose that thirst. Stay hungry for God's word. Mm -hmm. So, I was online. And, uh, but I, I, I started going to Walden University. That was a tough school, let me tell you. I'm, I'm ABD in that program. I was in a doctoral program, and ABD, ABD means 
all but my dissertation. I completed all of the work and everything else, but I ran out of two things. I ran out of time and I ran out of money. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was safe. Praise the Lord. Right. So, so I couldn't finish. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I really put myself in a box because of something that I had told my daughter. Mm -hmm. My daughter, uh, one time I was, I was getting ready to speak a Father's Day message and I went around to each one of my children and I asked them, what have you learned from me? And my daughter told me, said, Dad, you taught me not to quit. Mm -mm. Hold you accountable, all right. I said, oh my God, I haven't finished this degree. Mm. <laughs> I said, Lord, what am I going to do? I said, I haven't finished. And this girl didn't told me what I taught her, and now it's coming back at me. Oh. Tell them what you did, preacher. Then I get this email from a school in, in Indiana. Mm. So I very nicely sent them some information. They wanted to know uh, uh, how much uh, education do you have. And so I, I sent them all of my information and they called me and said, well, our effort is to help people get their degrees. Yes, he said, listen, he said, send me a certified, uh, uh, not a certified, uh, what, uh, what do you call it, a uh, 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 certain kind of letter. He said, or uh, 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 notarized. He mm -hmm. said, I want you to send us a notarized letter with all of the stuff that you have done, and we'll look at it and let you know what you need to do to get your degree. Said, well, this girl said, my dad told me not to quit. I can't quit now. I've come too far. I said, one thing I have learned, and I learned when I was at Walden University, I learned that I can do doctoral work. Amen. Amen. It's not an easy thing. There's a different style of writing. There are, are techniques of writing that you have to learn. And God blessed me to learn. So guess what happened? Mm. They sent me. No, I got a call, I think it was. They said, well, look, here is what you have to do. He said, send us, you sent us these papers showing us what you have completed, and here's what you need to take. Guess what they told me? So all you got to do, now I've done all this other study at Walden. They said, all you got to do is take six more classes. What? Now that wasn't easy. It was one of the classes I had. The guy had a one of the assignments was a, a book had a thousand pages in it, and he said the assignment was I want you to write a 750 word paper on that book. Mm. A thousand pages. And he wanted a 750-word paper mm. on that book. <laughs> Guess what? Because Ooh. I had learned how to study, because I had learned yeah. how to write, yeah. because I had learned how to read. Guess what? I got an A on the paper. <laughs> God is able. Yes, he is. I told you where I started from. Couldn't read, couldn't write. And had, I could tell you some more about the teachers that I ran into. I had some white teachers. I didn't want to say that too loud. I had a teacher stop me. I was headed into the classroom. Just stop, hold on, I want to talk to you. Now I told you I couldn't write. I can't write, I couldn't hear, so I couldn't spell very well. Still can't spell, I, I'll tell you that now. 
Thank God for this smartphone. I will call that phone. I will call that phone and ask that phone how to spell certain words. Talk to me. And it spell them out and I type them out. Huh. Praise God. Uh -huh. I had that teacher stop me. I was getting ready to go into this class. She said, she said, Michael, said, uh, uh, you can either stay in class or you can go to the home, your homeroom. But I want to use your paper as an example of a terrible paper. Oh, I ain't say <laughs> 11th grade. <laughs> Caucasian. She said, you can go to homeroom or you can sit in the class. Well, if I didn't show up, I might, I figured, I said, somebody might know it's my paper. Absolutely. I said, I'm going to sit in the class. And I sat in the class and I watched her rake over me. Mm -hmm. She didn't call my name. She didn't have to. But every mistake, she brought it out. That's all right. Because she's standing before God now. Teaching does not mean that you rake over people. That's right. She didn't know me. She didn't know my struggle. She didn't know anything about me. But God did. She did all of that. But God had something else to say about me. So I don't know where you are in your struggle or where you are in your studies, but don't stop. Yeah. Just because somebody said, I don't think you can make it. Oh, amen. Amen. Then after, I, after I got my, my degree, I ended up getting a doctorate in practical theology. Mm. I got another letter from a school in Florida from the guy that had been at the school in Indiana, he said, hey, you can get another doctorate. <laughs> he said, well, ain't you got enough? <laughs> no, you don't understand. You don't understand when you realize that, listen, there's so much to learn in this Amen. world, Amen. and if you cut yourself off, Amen. you're limiting yourself, Amen. you're limiting God's people. Yes. Listen, you got to be the best you can for God so that God's people can be the best they can for God. That's right. So guess what? He said, you can get a scholarship. You don't have to pay that much. So I said, okay. Started that class. I ended up getting a Ph.D. in Biblical Studies. Mm. Praise God. Now you might say, well, why did you do all of that? I'm going to tell you. I am not originally from the Church of God. Mm. I came out of the Methodist Church. Mm. All of my Methodist pastors had gone to school. And one of the, the bishops I was down here in Detroit, over there at Lafayette Towers when they were just built. And this bishop said to me, I was, I had come down with uh, a lady that had brought me down and uh, her nieces and nephews were members of the Church of God. That's how I got into the Church of God. And she said, matter of fact, this lady that brought me had been my third grade teacher. And guess what she did? If you're a teacher, pray over your kids. That woman prayed over me when I was in her third grade class, and I ended up getting saved going to Burlington. All oh, y'all used to go to Burlington. Y'all don't go there no more because y'all sold it. But I got saved at Burlington Campground. Y'all sold it. And guess what? That bishop said something to me that I have not forgotten. He said this, he said, son, 
when you drink, or when you drink, uh, 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 let me get this right here. He says, so when you, when you drink from the well of knowledge, he mm -hmm. said, don't take a sip. Mm. He said, sit and drink for a while. Yeah. Mm. A little knowledge is dangerous. Yeah. I've been sitting for some years trying to learn some things because there's so much to learn. One of my professors in seminary, a young brother, this is one brother I had never seen a, a brother had so many books. I appreciate him. After I had finished, uh, I have a, 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 a master's in counseling. After I had finished the counseling track from Ashland Theological Seminary, he asked, we were walking out one of the classrooms and he, he stopped me, he said, Mike, he said, I wanna ask you a question. What have you learned? God, off the top of his head. What have you learned? I'd gone through two years of counseling, studying counseling, writing papers, reading books. And he wanted me to tell him in a few words what I had learned. I looked at him. I said, well, Doc, I'm going to tell you what I've learned. I said, I've learned to preach the scriptures and not my issue. Mm. I know some of you didn't catch that. But there are a lot of preachers in the pulpit, they can't even begin to exegete a text, and all their preaching is their issue. Share something else with you, and then I'm gonna be finished. I, I had a I had a mentor in the Church of God, the late Doctor Vernon Ray. Boy, I tell you, I hated when God took him home, and I shared with him my academic dream. He didn't laugh at me or make light of them. He looked at me and said, if you don't do your dream, you'll never be satisfied. A whole lot of folks that are dissatisfied with their lives. So now, I'm not telling you that you have to go to school like I did. I remember my wife and I have been married uh, a few days ago, uh, 15th of, of this month, we've been married 53 years. All right. <laughs> and, my, <laughs> and my wife said this to me. I was taking a, I was taking a class in Greek. I, I've, I've had Greek before, but I wanted to finish it up. But uh, something happened. Uh, in my body started happening to me physically. And I said, I said, no. And I said to my wife, I said, that's it. I'm not taking another class, knowing in my heart that's not the way I feel. You still don't feel that way, but I guess so. enough is enough. And so she looked at me, started chuckling. At, and at that time that I made that uh, I said, uh, I said, that's it. I'm, I'm not studying anymore. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not taking any more classes. She looked at me. And at that time, we had been married for 44 years. She looked at me and started laughing. She said, yeah. She said, we've been married 44 years, and you've been in school 43 of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Now I'm not telling you I'm not I'm not telling you to be in school for 43 years, but that's but that's what was on my heart trying to fulfill my dream. 
Your dream may not be that size. I've tried not to waste any time because life in this world is so short. God love you. Thank you for listening. You don't have to go to school as long as I have. Give yourself to God. from the heart and not only from the heart but from an experience and many experiences that he had and we thank God for that amen and, and his text was what? what was his text? what was his text about? his text wasn't don't give up he didn't don't give up he was talking about rightfully dividing the word of truth he said to study to show yourself God says that. Not only in school, but study your Bible. Study, study your Bible. But in it, you will find life, and you will find life abundantly. And we thank God. I thank God. Amen. Dr. Cole. Give him another home. I thank God for him. I really, really do. Amen. And now to our graduates, we appreciate them. We love them. All of them could not be here. Uh, one of them, uh, I think, was at work, and the other one was, uh, uh, I think she would have been in the hospital and whatnot. But uh, we thank God for them. Anyhow, there's five of them. And the five were, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, Mr. Jalen Jackson, uh, Mr. Nicholas Steiger, he's here. Uh, Mr. Nathan Williams, uh, he's not here. Uh, Ms. Uh, Mia Zarid and uh, Miss Jazzy. Gabrielle, she's here today. Amen. I want, I, want, I want them to come forth. Amen. Amen. Give them some more honks if you want. Amen. Amen. Because for an African American male, when I was 18 years old, I got drafted out of high school. I think, I think really crossing the stage and graduating from high school was a big thing. And I thank God for that I did that. Amen. I went to college and I, I did I graduated from there. But I can tell any young African American, please get you some school. Amen. Please. Yes. Please. If you don't, folks are gonna try to miss you every day. Amen. And I and I just thank uh Dr. Copeland again. Uh uh for he told you where he came from. A situation whereby you understand they said that he was uh are basically physically impaired or whatever, still yet, God was with you. And I thank God. I thank God for that. Amen. We're going to ask our graduates to do two things. Tell us of some of their achievements, if they have them. And not only that, I want them to tell us basically what is their next move after graduate, whether or not it's college or what. First of all, ladies are first, and we're going to have call. We're going to have Miss Johnson to come at this time. Amen. Of my mom and my dad as well um, and I just thank you all so much for allowing me to be able to celebrate my accomplishments because I wasn't able to walk and I was pretty upset about that but God has the final say and um, I'm just very thankful for that um, and then for my future goals I've been applying to master's programs with um, and then after that I went to uh, apply to medical school or PA school I'm not sure which one yet so keep me in your prayers on which one I should decide on. <laughs> Yes, I just thank you for this um, opportunity. I'm really grateful for it because, again, I did not get to walk. So thank you so much. You. I, 
I remember when Jazzy was little and, uh, you know, I went to her house and she and they gave me a tour of the house and then uh, they were going to have a birthday party. And, and uh, I think, I said, well, where y'all going to have the big birthday party? They said at the, uh, some kind of rain cafe it was. Rain. And, Rainforest. Rainforest Cafe. And I said, my God, y'all having it there? But anyhow, they were small and they handled themselves so well. And so they had so much, uh, so many social skills. That's what they had. And I really appreciate that. Amen. The next person, and we got to have an African American male here, is Mr. Nicholas Steiner. Come on. Up. Okay, so good morning, everybody. I am a senior at University High School Academy. And first and foremost, I would like to say thank you to the church community and everyone who wrote me a letter of recommendation. Pastor Long, who wrote me a letter of recommendation for Wolverine Pathways all the way back in seventh grade. And now at the end of the program, I'm blessed to say I have a full tuition scholarship to the University of Michigan. That's what's up! Yes, sir. Go blue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Also, I'd like to say thank you to Brother Michael Turner, who wrote me a letter of recommendation to the National Honor Society that I got accepted into this year. And I also used that letter of recommendation to get accepted into the Midnight Golf Program. Okay. Also, granted me various scholarship opportunities. For example, I got a full tuition scholarship to Norfolk State University in Virginia. And also, I got a, a full tuition scholarship to Fisk University in Tennessee. That's what's up. So, the church community has helped me along the way in my high school career. And um, I plan to attend University of Michigan in the fall. Yes, sir. And hopefully, major in industrial operations engineering. I used to date a girl from Northern Oklahoma State before I got married. Y'all made a joke. But anyway, <laughs> the University of Michigan. Isn't that That's wonderful? all beautiful, beautiful. We thank God. We thank God for these young people and their achievements. And not only that, but they have what I call options these days. When I was growing up, you had no options. Mm. Not as many as they got, you don't. Amen. They have options. I, I tell folk all the time, I went one time and I went to get a car. And I ordered me the car, and I never shall forget. The lady says you have standards, but you also have options. And the standards were you got to have a rear view mirror. Option was the sun in the top. Mm. See, in, in back in the day, we ain't had no sun in the top. <laughs> you ain't had that many options. You had standards. And I tell people all the time uh, today, for this special day, I wouldn't send an 18 year old child to Vietnam to have a machine gun, would you? No. Not right now, no. It was a different time, but I'm glad that we still have parents like these young people parents that see into it, that they hold on to what? The standards. All right. The standards and forget about the options. Amen. You gotta do that. And I thank God for every parent that is here today. Amen. Amen. God has been so good and we appreciate you all and we appreciate uh, these young people. Amen. Now we have a gift here for our young people. Amen. And uh, the church, hey, do me a favor, you all. Don't just drive off and leave. Come by and shake these young people's hand. And then put something green in their hand. I'm not talking about collard greens. Put something green in their hand. I'm glad to see these young people make it. You understand? And, and as I told you, there's young one young boy, he, he one young man, excuse me, who is a sports writer right now that I dedicated what? It had to be 35 years ago. Oh no, I, I'd say basically it's somewhere in that 35. Uh, and guess what? He's a sports writer. Moved here, and now he's a sports writer. He called me and said, guess what? You dedicated me 35 years ago. I've gone to college, two colleges, graduated and did everything. Now, isn't that a beautiful thing? Yes, sir. Amen. So we, we thank God for this. Amen? Amen. 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 I have no further remarks, amen, unless uh, I think this is it. But anyhow, I'm going to ask our speaker to come back and give the benediction. And after he gives the benediction, please come and say something. You just touch him. Touch our graduates today. Amen? Amen. amen. Come on. Thank you. 
brings a lot of people. You know what? I, I tell all of the young people that are in school something that I learned. I want to tell you, I hope you remember it. Go to the top because it's not crowded. Mm, there you go. Talk to him. Let's pray. That's good advice. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity of sharing. We thank you, dear Lord, for these young people, dear Lord, who are doing their best, dear Lord, as they add to their virtue knowledge, dear God. Guide them and direct them. Keep them, dear Lord, from hurt, harm, and danger. And let them, dear Lord, go to the top where you want them. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen. 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 Paris, would you come and let's take pictures together with them? <laughs>